Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to be discussing this motor diagram here along with another snapshot of a motor connector and an encoder connector. Now, many of you guys out there who are shopping overseas or comparing what type of automation system you want to go with will compare a servo for a stepper and many of you compare prices first. We all know that. Um, what ends up happening typically is that I'll have a client like I've had here look at buying a closed loop system and when he purchases a closed loop system what's many times overlooked is the fact that yeah you found a good deal overseas in what you feel uh, includes everything required meaning the motor and the drive combo that's typically what many guys see the issue is is that they're not looking at the variables that are missing and the two missing main variables are each motor if it's a closed loop stepper slash servo requires a motor cable which we see here on the B view on this drawing and under A view here you also require an encoder cable so while you're getting the motor and the drive typically for about the same price you'd pay for a stepper motor stepper drive you now require the additional cables to accommodate this package and when you factor that in each motor requiring two cables instead of one that changes everything it changes the engineering of your system first of all your cable chain has to be bigger to support the size cable increase because now we're carrying two cables per motor per axis instead of the traditional one with an open loop stepper so again variables here need to be considered the other major point you can see here on the B view this is the connector to supply the motor power. You can see it's a four pin connector, GX16. The issue with this is that a GX16 four pin connector uh, does not have a shield drain. There's no allocation here for a shield drain. None of these cables are shielded and they should under best practice be double shielded regardless of them having an encoder. Seems to be a misconception online that because it's a closed loop uh, automation system that it does not require shielding or minimal shielding it doesn't work that way double shielded cable is required for EMI uh, to once again be uh, mitigated in terms of this automation control system you're building so again pay close attention to these variables because once again when you look at a drive and, a, and an actual motor combo and you say man this looks like the same price I can buy it why am I going to buy a stepper? And then when you factor in the additional cables required, the additional cable chain required, all of a sudden the price starts jumping rapidly. When you're using proper cables, they're not cheap. So you're going to find out real quick, this is how expensive this can become very quick, and it usually happens after the fact you've already purchased the components, and then you realize it. Because rest assured, many of you already realize these cables that are attached at the base of the motor are very short. So you're going to require those extension cables to cover whatever distance we need you to, to get to the controller safely and once again provide you uh, the controller in, in full featured format. So when we look at that, we already know here we've got a connector that isn't shielded at all. DB9 connectors, once again, should be double shielded in terms of the cables being used. So again, we need to extend those cables and we need to use double shielding. Now the question comes, like it did with this client, is what do I do about a connector here? I see that you sell 18.4 double shielded pre-built motor cables. But they have GX16 five pin connectors on. And this is a good question. You actually have two options here. Okay, first option would be to use a G540 solderless DB9 connector, cut this connector off, and transpire this motor connector for power to a DB9 because my DB9 cables for the G540 are double shielded. Okay, that would eliminate a lot of headache if you don't want to solder. If you do want to solder, you can go with my 18.4 Pro Motor cables, which are fully assembled, with a GX16 5 pin. What you would require here is to cut this connector off, and you're going to solder those four leads to a GX16 5 pin butt connector. And that butt connector screw locks on to my GX16 5 pin double shielded cables, which are properly shield drained, and then they are ground drained to the base 
of your electrical enclosure. So on the motor end, you would not have a ground. So again, you're only going to attach the four leads we see here on this end that's actually powering the motor. However, your ground will be attached inside of your enclosure for your electronics on the opposite end on a ground bus. So again, very simple way to uh, handle this solution. Uh, looking at this, you can see it's real easy to get overwhelmed when you're like, oh man, what do I do now? I've, I've already got the motors, I've got the drives, but these are way too short. I'm not going to be able to work with them. And you got to come up with a viable solution. And again, this is what you have to look at. You know, this client actually contacted me, wanted me to build custom cables for him. And monetarily, it doesn't make sense. He would have paid much more to me in labor to build custom cables where he could just change out the connectors and boom, he's up and running. Okay. But again, you have to pay close attention. Do I have DB9 cables to fit encoders? Yes. I have double, uh, double shielded DB9 20 gauge. Motor cables for the G540 are backwards compatible with an encoder cable because, again, it's a DB9. So it'll plug in. You're set to go there. They're 13 feet in length. Um, they are pre-built, so you're good to go. How long can you go with an encoder cable? Well, that's a good question. I get asked that a lot. I would not go past 15 feet in length, mainly because you're dealing with very low voltage signals. So, again... Keep that in mind that it's not an indefinite cable run. You know, some guys want to go 30, 35 feet. I've heard of in excess of 40 feet, and that's getting ridiculous. I mean, if you're really needing a cable that long, you have to look at where you're going to locate your controller because if that signal strength is too weak, having the encoder becomes essentially all but useless. So... Again, we have to pay attention to voltage drop all the way across the board, and you're always paying attention, once again, to what makes monetarily the most sense. Like I said, actually swapping out the connector, in my eyes, uh, if you're okay with soldering, and even if you're not, going with the solderless DB9 connector, you're still golden. But you can convert any of these cables that come standard on these type of overseas packages from China very easily using the proper cables without spending an inordinate amount of money. Now, is it still going to cost more than a stepper system? Usually it will. Forget what I say. Look on YouTube. 98% of the systems you see are built with steppers for cost effectiveness. And again, the accuracy is still ridiculous if the machine is calibrated properly with the, with the correct amount of tooling. So again, knowing your all of the ways that you can work the system, so to speak, in terms of adapting it to what you're trying to do, that's why I covered this in a video because I feel that it's very important for you guys to know that you're not locked into using these connectors. You know, The DB9 is general, very easy, low voltage, that's fine for the encoder, but this connector right here, if you guys were to use a 4-pin GX16 connector, you will not have the shield drain required for your actual motors and therefore once again we're going backwards we're just basically connecting cables and hoping for the best and that's not what we want to do so again i hope that this video has been helpful a uh, quick video but again i uh, hope you picked up something from it for you guys looking at getting involved with closed loop systems especially dealing with the wires um, with them factor in all your variables factor in the size of your cable chain you will not be able to do that, and I have guys always wanting to do it who've never built the CNC before. They want to do it prior to getting their motors in stock, and they haven't taken measurements on the cables that actually come in terms of the diameter with the motors. You need this information to properly size a cable chain. You cannot just pick an arbitrary cable chain and hope everything works. Okay, So I recommend getting your motors in first. Take the measurements on the two diameters of the cables being used, and then you know what diameter you're going to need by just simply going through and adding up the dimensions of the two there and all the axis and whatever axis is going through the actual cable chain add it up and then you'll have to do the math calculation you can see a video uh, that actually covers how to select the proper cable chain I'll put it in the description and you guys can go through that and do the proper math so you know exactly what you need because again the last thing you want to do is invest all this money and time and, and actually install these cables in an improperly sized cable chain and basically destroy what you've just invested in. So again, take your time with this. 
And once again, if you do require questions, comments, quotes, whatever it may be, message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also message me through my eBay store, eDealers Direct. You'll see the links in the beginning of the video and at the end. I thank you guys all for your support. Take care.